Hey everyone, I'm Rob B. He's Rob D. And now we've answered that, we'll answer even more. Yep, we get asked questions about property all the time. Well, today we've picked out the most popular questions we get asked and we're gonna answer them for you right now. Well, the first thing we need to clear up, because we do get asked this, is which Rob are you? Well, luckily you've just seen us. So you now know who's Rob B and who's Rob D. Let's see if the next one's easy. Well, not such an easy one next. How many properties do you own? We do get asked that all the time and it's easy in that I do know, but it's not easy in that I'm not gonna tell you. In fact, I don't tell anyone. And in fact, Rob and I don't even know how many properties each other owns. And the reason for that is it's not important. If we shared a number publicly, half of people would think that we were just showing off and half of people would think, oh, actually, that's not as impressive as I thought. And they might take what we have to say less seriously. Yes, if someone's giving advice about property, you want to know that they have experience in property and ideally that they own property themselves. But beyond that, numbers can be very misleading. It can depend how much leverage they use. It can depend how long they've been in the game for. It can depend on the value of their properties. One property worth half a million and 10 worth 50,000 sound very different, but in terms of overall exposure, are the same thing. So I'm sure people will keep on asking, but really, beyond the basics, you should be judging people on the quality of their advice, not the size of their portfolio. Absolutely, Rob. You know, you could say you've got five properties, but if you've built them up over the last year, how much experience do you have? Whereas if you've got five properties, but you've been doing it for over 10 years, then you've got loads of experience. The number is the same, but the advice that person can give you is going to be very different. And completely agree, Rob, it also goes for the value. Five properties in Middlesbrough are going to be very different to two properties in London. The two properties in London could be worth a million pounds and the five properties in Middlesbrough could be combined worth £250,000. So which is better, the five or the two? Well, I'd prefer the two if it was me. So don't get fixated on how many properties a person has. For me, what's important is how much experience they have. Okay, Rob, the next question we get asked all the time is where is the best place to invest right now? Well, I can tell you the best place for me, but the best place for you, well, that's gonna depend. It's gonna depend on your strategy and your goals. But here's the good news. In the UK right now, there are loads of great places to invest. Even if I was to give you a name of a town and city right now, that is the best place to invest. It doesn't mean that you can go to that town and city, invest, and it'd be a great investment because you can get it wrong. You may overpay. So research is critical. You can go and invest in an average town and an average city, but if you build your network, if you get yourself a great deal, that could far outperform investing in the best city if you do it slapdash. But will be nice. If you really want to know where we think the best places are to invest right now, we've created a video on that very subject with the UK's best hotspots. You can find a link to that video in the description below. The next question we always get asked is where are we in the 18 year cycle? If you don't know what the 18 year cycle is, don't worry, we've got a resource for you coming right up. But the people asking the question clearly do know. The difficulty is we can't give you an answer that won't go out of date. I could give you the answer today when we're recording, but by the time you're watching, it could be completely different. So instead, I would encourage you to do two things. Firstly, understand the signs that will help you recognize where in the cycle we are for yourself. And in the resource I'm going to talk about in a moment, we've got a whole section dedicated to exactly that. There are some simple signs that you can look out for that will tell you not exactly where we are to the day, but they'll help you recognize whether you're in a boom, whether we're in the growth stage, or if we're somewhere in the middle. And that for most people will be enough. The other thing I'd encourage you to do is to build your network of other investors to share ideas and see what they're saying. The Property Hub Forum is one place where you can do that. There's always lively discussions on the 18 year cycle. And if you type cycle into the search box, you'll be able to easily find those conversations. But if you want to boost your understanding of the cycle or you've never heard of it and you want to know what all the fuss is about, then check out our free course called the 18 year property cycle explained. It's got everything you need and you'll find the link in the description. Another question we get asked all the time is, should I buy a house or a flat? Well, it's easy. Both are great. People get fixated on whether you should buy a house or a flat, but there are pros and cons to both. So people will say, oh, I don't want a flat or an apartment because I have service charges and I don't want to pay service charges. That will eat into my profit. Well, the thing about service charges, it also means that the amount of maintenance you need to do is vastly reduced because the service company will look after your block of apartments and that is accounted for within your service charges. Whereas a house, you have to do all the refurb stuff yourself. And that not only costs you money, but also time. So which should you do? Well, consider both. 
If you're invested in a city, then an apartment is normally the way to go. However, finding a house within a city could be something that is a bit different to what else is on the market. So it could be a unique opportunity. So you can have both as options. Then if you're investing in the suburbs, you may go, oh, I'll go for a house because that's what most people have. And that's absolutely correct. But if there's a lack of apartments in that area, that again may be an opportunity. So there is no best, it's what's best for you. Assess each opportunity on its merits and decide for you as an investor, which one is gonna be the better option. A lot will depend on what type of investor you are. If you are a bit more hands-off, then it's probably more beneficial to go for more apartments. It doesn't mean you can't invest in any houses, but the makeup of your portfolio will have more apartments in it. And if you're a bit more hands-on, then chances are you'll have more houses because you don't mind doing the work. But again, it doesn't mean that you can't have apartments in your portfolio. And you should judge each and every investment on what is the best deal rather than what type of property it is. Another very common question that we get is, should I do buy to let or HMOs or flips or what? What should I do? What should my strategy be? The answer to that is much as with houses and flats, there is no best answer for everyone. It's going to come down to you and that's going to depend mainly on four different factors. The first is the amount of cash that you've got. If you've got absolutely bucket loads of cash, then you can afford to be fairly passive with your strategy, like buy to let. Whereas if you don't have much cash and you want to stretch it out as far as you possibly can, you might be looking for something that's a bit more hands-on or has the potential to return that initial investment to you more quickly. The second factor is your time frame. Are you looking for this to make an impact on your life in two years or 10 years or 20 years? Again, the longer your time frame, the less hands-on, the less risky, the less adventurous you need to be. A third factor is whether you're investing primarily for income or growth. Over the long term, the majority of gains from property come from capital growth as opposed to rental income. So if you're investing for the long term, tilting your strategy towards growth makes sense. However, it might be more important to you to have the income now because that would allow you to make an important change in your life, like quitting your job, for example. So that will have a big impact on the strategy you choose. And finally, the last thing to consider is the amount of time that you have. If you're working 50 hour weeks and you've got a young family, you're probably not going to be able to do anything that's that hands on. And if you try to, you'll struggle. So that will eliminate some options for you. If you've got buckets of time, then you've got all the possible options open to you and you can use the other factors I talked about to cut your options down. As for which different strategies map onto those options, well, we've got a free course on that. It's called Which Property Strategy is Right for You? And again, you'll find the link in the description. And the last question on our list is all about getting started. How do I get started? Is what so many people will ask us. Well, the thing about property is there's loads of options, as Rob's discussed, and loads of strategies, but that can be quite overwhelming. The first thing you should do is get very clear on why you're doing this. Don't just say, oh, I want to retire. Go, okay, I want to retire by this age and earn this amount of money. That is setting goals. And goal setting is where you should start. Because if you set clear goals, then you have much more chance of picking the right strategy and then being more successful as an investor. So start with the end in mind. Think about what you want to achieve, write down your goals and then work backwards from there. Now, if you're struggling to set goals, don't worry, we can help you. We've got a team of experts that help aspiring property investors do just that, set goals. It's a free service, no selling. If you wanna take advantage of it, look in the description and you can book on for your own free goals call that will help you set effective goals. And then from there, you'll be able to choose the right strategy and get started. So those are the questions we get asked the most. But what are you left wondering? Let us know in the comments so we might answer it in a future video. Yeah, please do. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.